Long Islanders rely on the water for recreation, food, and a way to make a living. But the headlines are often dominated by sharks. And another shark has been spotted in Hewlett Bay. Shark Week continues on Long Island. Shark sightings forced the temporary suspension of swimming at two Hempstead Town beaches yesterday. We have a hardcore gene in our body <laughs> to fear sharks, you know, from a survival standpoint. Look at that beautiful fish, huh? It's an excellent sign to have a very healthy apex predator uh, population here. Sharks have long been a part of Long Island's marine ecosystem. In recent years, sightings and attacks have increased, sparking fascination and concern. <laughs> is proving to be a, a crucial area, especially for young great white sharks, again, because of the food availabilities. Researchers here on the island are on a quest to understand why it seems more sharks are showing up in our waters. There's been a lot of great conservation work done with the bunker, so the food is there, and when the food is there, it can support these apex predators. Been a lot of great regulation on shark fishing through the years, so I think we're now maybe starting to see the benefits. Another big thing to keep in mind is we're seeing drones and everybody has a cell phone. So there's also this perception that there's a huge increase in the number of sharks. Well, might it be because there's more drone flights, you know, and everybody that sees sharks with their cell phone or with the drones are posting it. So there's a, a perception that there might be more sharks out there than there actually are. Climate change may also be playing a role, according to Joe Wyulo, curator and co-founder of the Long Island Aquarium. Ocean temperatures are increasing, so ranges of certain sharks uh, all different animals are, are changing. If there is more food in the area that's migrating into these warmer waters, the megafauna, the sharks, and the whales are going to follow them. And the change in water temperature is changing the types of sharks we are seeing. We're starting to see some warmer waters on Long Island for longer periods of time, and so that just gives these sharks that we typically wouldn't normally see in numbers starting to show up, like the spinner sharks, the black tips, the sharp nose. So there's a lot of compounding factors that I think go into, you know, what our perception and our understanding is of sharks on Long Island. Okay, tag is in. Conservation efforts are crucial in ensuring the survival of shark species and the health of our oceans. We are a go, ready to go here at a Capture State Park uh, with our uh, captain, Greg Metzger. He is a marine biologist. We're gonna do some sharking today. Environmental, checking things out, conservation, and to tag these sharks and to watch them in their natural environment. And we scoop out a small portion of the muscle, and this is going to go to support a couple other research scientists. There's so much life here today. We've had uh, a dusky shark, we've had a sand tiger shark, and we've also had a bullnose ray. Yeah. So um, what accounts for all the life here? Uh, I think, you know, the summertime for Long Island in the, in the ocean side, is, it's a good place. There's a lot of food here. Um, we've seen all kinds of uh, bunker and there's snappers in our, our chum slick. We're seeing uh, this rain bait coming in. Um, it's protected, uh, lots of food, relatively few predators. And so it's just a, a really special place to be a shark in the summertime. The tag is going to stay on the shark and it's going to record temperature and depth every 10 seconds for 28 days. After 28 days, it pops off the shark and we'll get a location of where it popped off. Large sharks aren't new to Long Island waters. The late legendary Montauk shark fisherman Frank Mundus is believed by many to be the inspiration for the character Captain Quint in the movie and book Jaws. Mundus caught a 17-foot great white shark weighing more than 3,400 pounds off Montauk. This is video from the scene in 1986. Some record books still say it's the largest fish ever caught by rod and reel. Everyone thinks shark, I think they think jaws, and they think about the great white. What, what do you see with the great white population and what's happening here on Long Island? One of the first scientific questions that we set out to answer, which really jump-started this whole crazy adventure we're on, is, is the New York bite, which includes the South Shore of Long Island, a nursery for white sharks? So we went out in 2015, we were permitted, and we had a pop-off satellite tag, and we were, uh, you know, I was, determined to try and catch a baby white shark, and w which we did. And so we were the first to put a pop-off satellite tag on, on a young of the year white shark. And that was proof of concept that, well, they are here. 
Yep. And then our team has been able to go on now. And so I think we're up to 35 Young of the Year white sharks that we've caught and tagged so far since uh, 2015. So from that, we've been able to deem that yes, the New York bite is the only confirmed nursery in, in the Northwest Atlantic for, for white sharks. While white sharks get a lot of the attention, we have several other types of sharks swimming in our waters. It's about 12 different species that we have consistently been catching and tagging over the course of, of the time that we've been doing it. Some of those species include the short fin mako, the uh, common thresher shark, spinner sharks, black tips, sand tiger, sand bar, uh, sharp nose, dusky sharks, baby white sharks, true tiger sharks, smooth and scalloped hammerheads. This summer has been relatively quiet. However, there were at least 13 reports of bites on Long Island over the last two years. I could feel my foot like down the shark's throat, you know, it was, it was scary. I realized it was a shark. I jumped back on my board and it swam underneath me and it just gave it a good slap on the other side, turned to the beach and just paddled as hard as I could. With more sharks comes the need for increased safety measures so beachgoers, surfers, and sharks can coexist. But we do have our lifeguards on duty. They're scanning the waters. They have surf boats in front of the waters. They have personal watercraft. And we have drones. Drones has been, have been really an incredible tool for us to watch over the beaches. They, you could see pretty clearly into the water. So if we do see a dangerous marine life, we're able to react right away to get individuals out of the water. People seven or eight years ago probably never even thought really about sharks going when they were, went to the beach and went swimming. And because of the unfortunate increase in negative interactions that have happened, it's on everybody's mind. And there are precautions you can take. You know, one of the biggest things that you can do is look at the water before you go into it. If you see large schools of menhaden, if you're seeing bunker splashing, if you see you know, ospreys diving, whales, dolphins, there's probably sharks there as well. And so you'd want to just stay on the beach, enjoy the spectacle in front of you that's relatively new for Long Island. You do want to do, use some caution when you do go into the water. You are entering their world. You're entering their environment. So avoiding dawn and dusk times when the lighting is low. Sharks do have some pretty decent eyesight, but if, you know, if, if the conditions aren't that great, again, they're going to be more inquisitive. We use fishing lures that are shiny to a flashlight and attract, right, to grab attention. So don't wear jewelry, don't wear you know, things that are bright gold necklaces or rings or things, just something that might flash in the water that catch their attention. In 2024, Long Islanders may have noticed a slight decrease in the number of shark sightings across the South Shore beaches. This might be attributed to the lack or lessening of the bunker and Menhaden populations that typically show up across the area throughout the summer. We checked in with Martin L. Gary, who is Director of Division of Marine Resources at the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation, for his thoughts on this theory. Based on the assessments that's been done, the most recent assessment is the abundance of Menhaden um, is healthy. Um, the stock's not overfished, overfishing's not occurred, occurring. Um, all the states, including Virginia, which has the reduction fishery, the Omega Fleet, plus their bait fishery, are within the bounds of their quotas. Um, we're fishing at levels that are sustainable and healthy. If you were a fisherman, been on Long Island for the last 10 years, one of the things that would be striking to you is how much more dolphins, whales, and sharks you've seen off the south shore of Long Island. And I think it's directly related to their food resource that's out there. In recent years, other sea mammals and southern species of fish are making more appearances close to Long Island. On the South Shores, we, we tend to get these warm rings coming off of the Gulf Stream. The last five years has been magical off the South Shore of Long Island. You know, being able to go to the beach and seeing whales breaching has just been magical. As we learn more about these ancient predators, we find that the key to coexistence lies in understanding. Sharks have roamed the oceans for millions of years, and with our help, they will continue to do so. At the end of the day, it's a very good thing that there are this variety of sharks and this numbers of sharks here. If the environment wasn't conducive for all of these large predators to be here, they wouldn't be here.